Greetings, tubers of the U. Welcome to another Knife Guy channel. I'm another Knife Guy. And today, we're going to be taking a look at two companies founded when hair metal was yet in its infancy. Cold Steel. Spyderco. Fight to the death. Between AD-15 and Shaman. I think the Shaman's going to win. He's got elemental powers. Stay tuned. Shakold Steel is a company founded in 1980 by Lynn Thompson. Yes, the man, the magician, the wizard. The knife wizard, that is. Founded in 1980. He's inventor of the American Tanto, as seen here. The Voyager. Code 4. Fantastic knives, by the way. In addition to folding and fixed blade knives, they also make weapons for war, zombie apocalypse, such as the shillelagh, a.k.a. Blackthorn walking stick, uh, the cane sword, the viking sword, all these fantastic things. You gotta get you one. Cold steel. Unique marketing. I hate pig carcasses just as much as the next man. And they're based in good old America, Ventura, California. However, their models are produced in Taiwan. But guess what, buddy? Taiwan produces some fan-freaking-tastic knives. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at this beauty. Now, this is not stock AD-15. Sorry, buddy. I dyed this shit doo-doo brown. Gave it a tuxedo finish. Oh yeah. Not like yours. <laughs> not like yours. American Tanto. So Spydeco is a company that I'm relatively new to, but I like very much. Uh, here we have the Spydeco Shaman in uh, M4 and uh, JG10. Uh, but a little history about Spydeco first. Uh, we were founded in um, 1981, I'm sorry, 1978 when they first started making sharpeners, and not we, I was not a part of this. Uh, founded in uh, 1978, and they produced their first pocket knife in 1981, Spydeco Worker. Now, Spydeco Worker was the first pocket knife on the market to feature the thumb hole deployment. Um, very, very nice deployment method, uh, led to a lot of uh, fidgety factors there with the uh, spider flick and all that, whatever. Uh, they also invented the uh, compression lock, and uh, they were the first to put a pocket clip on a knife as well. So, fantastic company. They were founded by Sal and Gail Glesser. Uh, in addition to folding and fixed blade knives, like I, like I said, they also made uh, sharpeners, and they make carrying cases, branded with the Spyderco spider there. Um, they are founded in, uh, are based, sorry, in Golden, Colorado, and their models are produced in uh, the USA, just like this guy here. And uh, on planet Earth, I like that touch very much. If there, was any, uh, if there was a knife that I needed to go into space with, I would take this guy for sure. They also produce models in uh, Taichung, Taiwan, Japan, and, uh, and China there. So, Spyderco as a company does very little marketing, unlike a uh, company that we talked about earlier. Uh, and uh, they're known for making a variety of folders in a variety of materials. Their base models usually come in S30V. But they are known to do sprint runs uh, in uh, unique steels like uh, this LT LC200N here, one of my very favorite steels. But sprint runs, rare models, and all that kind of stuff. Spyderco is a great company if you're looking for a lot of variety in the knife market. So there you go, Spyderco. Okay, you two. Which one's better? I, I think the Shaman's better. Uh, I think the cold steel's better. How are we gonna agree on this, man? Uh, well, let's go point by point. Sounds good. Well, the cold steel here is a tough knife, definitely. It's ambidextrous, carries well, space efficient, and it's very, very pretty. It's also Three words, innovative. There's nothing else on the market quite like the AD-15 from Cold Steel at the price point. Seriously, one of the best values on the market today. You cannot go wrong with purchasing an AD-15. I love this knife. It's my spirit animal. That's why I dyed it doo-doo brown, just like my soul. Love this knife. Great hard use knife, perfect for the bush, grippy, 
almost too grippy. I had to sand down the G10 here, give it a little bit of softness. I'm already getting calluses, but I don't need more. Jesus, getting this out of the pocket was kind of a beast when I had the, the G10 all raised up and I didn't sand it down. But after I sanded it down, ooh wee, it smoothed up. Now, only thing I will say, these pivot, these pivots are different sizes. Didn't get that right in the first video. That guy was kind of silly. But the the yoke pivot should be, okay, should be a little shorter. Oh, I'm sorry, a little longer than the blade pivot. All right. Just remember that, because you'll get a very different action. You know, you'll get blade play in this. Right here, you do it. Right here, you'll get blade play if you switch the pivots out and the, put the wrong one in. You can tighten it down and it won't change. It's one of the only things I don't like. You have to make sure that these pivots are correct. Again, longer, shorter. All right? You got that? So, one thing I love about the AD15 here is the fidgetability. Now, I have ADD like a crazy person, so I fidget with my knives like a, like a madman. And this guy, it finger flicks, kinda. It's hard to do under a camera. There you go, finger flick. It closes like a dream, nice and buttery. It's great. Great knife for hard use because it's using washers. It's got a great grip, you know, great ergonomics here. Very similar, in fact, to the to the Shaman. But we'll let that other guy talk about this guy. But yeah, I love this AD-15. Great knife. If you're looking for something that's unique, is it has a great value to it, and uh, and you can beat on, not have to worry about. Now, I will say, these sold out quick, and uh, we don't know when they're gonna be back, but when they are, they're about 170 bucks, and when you compare that like I said, in value to the AD-15 from Andrew Demko, master designer, we get about a you know, $600, $600 price difference, which is insane. So you want an AD-15, you better get you one of these guys. Anyway, we'll, we'll take it on to the next dude. Okay, so for the Spydeco Shaman here, we have something that's actually quite compelling. Now this model is in uh, M4 and uh, JG10, but the base model is actually just as compelling. It's actually a sized up version of their, uh, of their native model, which is one of their uh, oldest models uh, they have. So Spydeco um, basically does really good work out of Golden, Colorado. This is a USA made knife. Uh, as as compared to the uh, AD15, which is made in Taiwan, that matters for some people, not so much for me. But there it is. Uh, this knife is a dream in hand. Uh, compared to the AD15 here, it's uh, it feels a little bit, uh, you know, more square. These are uh, it's not as contoured uh, as the uh, the Shaman here, and uh, the Shaman is an absolute dream in every grip you can you can imagine. So even uh, even choked up here in uh, in crazy reverse grip here, you can kind of you can kind of imagine this thing is uh, this thing is a beast, you know. Um, the compression lock here is actually quite nice. I like the uh, the, the fidgetability of it. It's very nice. You can easily uh, finger flick this guy out, uh, no problem if you're not under a camera. But there, yeah, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. Nice finger flick action there. You can even uh, you know fun flip that guy. I like that very, very much about this knife. Um, it's actually been uh, quite a hard decision uh, because uh, we're all the same person here. I, I own this knife. I own that knife. Uh, you know, I'm just crazy. But uh, it's it's been a hard decision to figure out which one I'm going to bring with me in the in, in the pocket. Uh, they both carry quite nicely. They both employ very, very, very similar clips. Um, Check that out. Almost the same. You know, this one rides a little bit. Uh, this one rides a little bit higher than this guy. But there you go. They both uh, have deployment and uh, locking mechanisms that keep your fingers completely out of the blade path. And uh, it's great. It's really hard to decide. Um, Value-wise, though, uh, the Shaman comes in uh, at around uh, 180 bucks. It's about a $10 difference, to be completely honest. So it depends on what you really like. If you don't like uh, Salglessa and uh, 
if you don't like Sal Glessa, then you go with Gold Steel. If you don't like Lynn Thompson or Andrew Demko, then you go with Spydeco. I love these knives, both of them. Uh, they both have uh, drawbacks, though. So the AD15 was talked about, drawback there. Uh, the Spydeco Shaman, the only drawback to me, really, is the fact that the little quote-unquote nubbin just hits you right there when, you're, uh, when your finger goes. But after a day, you can get your finger out. Um, another thing, bit and finish on this guy wasn't perfect. It had a little bit of blade play. I had to do some adjustment on there. They they sent it in with a whole lot of Loctite, but it's okay. Not that not anything bad. Uh, Jimping was a little sharp. Same with same on the uh, AD15 though, so it's not a big deal. But yeah, it's medical shaman, AD15, both fantastic hard hard use knives if you need them. Uh, it just depends on what you like, really. If I had to choose in a fire between these two particular knives. Um, it's hot. It really is. It really is hot. What do you think? Well, my gut instinct tells me to go with the cold steel just because I'm a cold steel fan. But if I'm being fair, I really have to say it's a tough decision. The Shaman is a beautiful knife. So is AD15, but it's beautiful in a different way. Uh... I, I really can't make a decision out of the way. It really depends on what the user wants. They want something that's a little bit more comfortable in hand, uh, uh, but a little bit less fidgetable. Go with the uh, the Shaman here. Uh, if you need something super fidgetable and uh, a little bit heavier, with a little bit of a blockier feel, toolish type of feel, Go with the uh, the AD15, but these knives are actually, if you hold them both in your hand, they feel quite similar. Even in the choked up position, feels like you're holding two versions of the same knife. Um, so get you both, carry them both with you. Yeah, uh, dual wield. That's the that's the term. If you're a shaman, you can actually dual wield uh, maces or uh, axes or uh... shut up, buddy. None of that nerd stuff. All right. Well, folks, thank you for watching the video. Please remember to subscribe down below, hit the like button, and leave a comment. Please make it nice. If it's not, I'll laugh. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>